Hey there, I'm Alex. Today I want to talk to you about Gaussian splats. So when Gaussian splats came out last year, I took a look uh, just to see what all the fuss was about, and they were awesome. The problem with them was that it was very complicated to do anything with them or even to train them. Everything had to be done through a command line. There was no real software, so to speak, to to be able to take advantage of them. And I figured it was just too soon, so I, I figured I'd wait. I kept waiting, I got busy, and I never looked back into it. So I spent the last few weeks uh, looking at the latest workflows, seeing what people have had good results with, and uh, I want to share you at least what your first step into, into it should be at the moment, or at least what I've found most success with. My intention is to share this with you as some sort of introduction, uh, just so that you can get your first Gaussian splat uh trained and hopefully find some interest because i think the idea is that the more people that use it the more workflows that come up and then you know it just gets our creative juices flowing so having said that my intention is to record a longer tutorial where i go from start to finish where i just record a video train gaussian splats and then take them into something like unreal where i can properly place them relight them and then once I have that ready, I can take that back into Nuke and comp it into a shot and see how successful it is and see if it's even worth our time. I'll record that soon when I have some time, uh, but hopefully sooner than later. So just to get started here, what I'm going to be showing you today is a software uh, called PostShot. And the nice thing about it is that it's open source and it's, it's a local installation. So there's nothing you, that you need to be sending to the cloud which is great for us for privacy uh, um, in terms of, uh, you know, if you want to do something with clients, you, you, you want to avoid cloud stuff as much as possible. So um, thankfully, from all the ones I tested, this was the most successful one. So good, that, that's actually very good. And they seem to be rolling out uh, updates frequently, which is also really nice. Um, I had the intention of recording this three weeks ago and I just haven't had the time. And since then they've already updated once or twice. So that's really nice to see. And not just minor bug things, like it's quality of life improvements. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm gonna walk you through just rendering or, or, or just training your first uh, Gaussian splat. And then uh, I'll leave it there for that longer video in the future, okay? So. Uh, just let me show you here what I've uh, I, I recorded a very exciting shot here of my kids uh, truck right so just as you would with any Gaussian splat you want to capture all the sides and keep in mind this is by no means uh, perfect because it has highlights you want you want the lighting to be as uniform as possible but to me this was just a test right just to see how how um, how successful even with not perfect footage I could I could be. So again, this just has highlights going all over the place. One side is definitely hotter than the other, but again, just a first test. And I've, since then I've done a few more and they've been pretty successful. So I figured I start you with my starting point. Um, so in the, in the longer video, I'll be showing you best practices and all that stuff, but just for now, this one I'll be showing you. And again, just want to cover as many angles as you can, top, bottom, you know, you want to orbit around your object. And then once you have that, you want to go ahead and fire up your, uh, you want to fire a post shot, right? Which I'm doing now. So once you have that open, it's as simple as, uh, just dragging your video in. However, keep something in mind. This video that I recorded, I recorded using an iPhone and I made the mistake or, or not of, of rendering, of, of recording it in HDR, right? The problem with rendering in, in, in recording in HDR, uh, which I realized after a few other tests that I did, is that everything, of course, looks very blown out because when you drag it into PostShot, it just doesn't care. It just, I, I guess it's just flattening it to a bit and then of course, it doesn't roll off correctly, so just keep that in mind. Uh, funny enough, I figured out uh, an easy way of, if, if you already recorded your video as HDR, but you, you definitely want to do that and you don't want to re-record your video with HDR off, which you can do in your iPhone, um, I figured out the best way was <laughs> exporting the same HDR video through iMovie, and that's going to create a correct 8-bit image from your HDR. So actually, I'll just leave it for the end. I'll just show you a series of screenshots of how you want to go ahead and export uh, 
through iMovie, which is free on your iPhone. And then that way you can just import your HDR to iMovie, which I've never used until today, or just until this test. And then um, I'll walk you through the steps of how to export that properly, and then you can just use that. For, but for now, um, I'm just going to use the HDR just because we're not looking at something that's going to be perfect today, but hopefully good enough. So he, here's the first step, right? So like I said, you want to go ahead and drag your video in. I'm going to go ahead and, and close it here because we don't really need it. And then PostShot's going to, of course, t tell you where that video is. And then we want to say, uh, usually be, because we're, you, you usually want to train with images right what what this is going to be doing in the background is is going to be extracting frames from that video and then training on those frames as if they were photographs so when you record your video you want to keep it um, I recorded at 60 frames per second just to reduce the amount of motion blur as much as I could so as you can see here it's telling me that um, our video here has 13 what is it 1367 frames but of course it's just too much so it's it's saying you can just start with 100 you can just set it to whatever i'm just going to leave it at 100 i know it does a pretty good job with that number so uh, but depending on how complex your object is you want to go up or down right and then um, you can of course just do this with the photographs but i just figured it this would be much much easier so then camera poses you leave everything default really and then actually the features, I tried a few times, 8, 10, 12, I didn't find uh, much of a difference, even though sometimes uh, people say that uh, bumping it up to, to 12 does produce a better result. I did it with a few different objects and a few different videos outside buildings, bunch of stuff, and I didn't really see much of a difference. So, I mean, if you're not in a rush, just bump it up to 10, 12, and then, you know, at least you know that you tried. <laughs> um, so then you want to leave the radiance field profile at default to splat MCMC, and it's going to dance, it's going to down sample your images to 1600 pixels by default. For me, that's fine, but if you want to use it, you know, for something that requires much more detail, you probably want to uncheck that. And then maximum splat count, I'm leaving default, all everything else is default. And then the training is going to do just like copycat does of the thousands of epochs. This is offering you to do it on with 30,000 steps, right? So more or less the same. Um, I left it at 30. I left it longer to 60, 90. I didn't see much of a difference most times. Sometimes I did end up landing around 45 or 50,000 depending on the object, but for now I'm gonna leave it at default 30. So once you've done that, you wanna hit import. And then what's doing here in the background, it's saying uh, selecting images, right? And so it's, it's just grabbing your video and it's chopping it up and then uh, extracting those images for the training to take place. Unfortunately here, it doesn't you know, allow us to see those images but we're gonna trust it that it's picking the best ones. But if you wanna be really specific about what you want your training to happen on, you probably wanna start with photographs or extract your own frames, but th this is fine. Like uh, you can always add more images if you want. So once that's uh, happening, then the next step is just uh, starting to place those cameras in space, right? Like it says camera tracking steps. So it's trying to analyze those images to see where things, uh, where the camera was at the moment of taking that picture. So it does four passes of this. And then you see, we start seeing some points here, right? So we start seeing our, our, our point cloud and we can see our little truck there starting to get populated. So while this is happening, I wanted to show you something else. Um, so you can see, the, again, the point cloud is populating. Uh, it's not oriented correctly. So I think we can just fix that just so it's easier for us to navigate. And let's go back to that. And you can see, you can more or less make out the truck there. And then once that, the cameras are all placed in space, you see it starts showing us those splats in context. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off those dots while the training takes place. And you see, this is all real time. Uh, it's saying it's going to take another five minutes, but it's going up. I know it's going to take like 10 or 15 minutes. I, I won't watch you, let you watch the whole training, but I did want to show you how you can watch it in training and see how things start getting defined, right? Which is already pretty cool. This is really cool to see. Um, and in the past, the problem with uh, Gaussian splats was that you couldn't really, there, there were no tools to clean them up, right? Like what you got was what you got. And you see there's a lot of floating artifacts. I mean, the training's still going, but um, 
the, the nice thing about software like PostShot is that you can easily clean up your uh, your Gaussian splats. So I'm going to let this train and I'll be back as soon as that's done. All right, so the training has just completed. It took just under 20 minutes. You see it says that the 30,000 steps have been reached. You can, of course, uh, add more if you need here and just, you know, start, uh, continue the training from there. But I'm pretty happy with the results. Just, you know, orbiting through our, our subject looks uh, pretty good. So the next thing I want to show you is how do we clean up this mess? Because, of course, if we zoom out, the problem with the splats for the longest time was, you know, all this noise, right? And this is the stuff we want to get rid of because what we want is just our subject. So how do we get rid of that? That's the nice thing about PostShot. It has all these um, couple of cleaning tools that make this actually quite easy. Um, and I'll show you here on the on the left, you have a selection tool, which is sort of like a paintbrush, right? And if you, if you uh, hold control and mouse wheel up or down, you can just change the scale of that. And you can see it's giving you in blue a preview of the section it's going to be selecting. So if I just quickly do that and zoom out, what you'll see is that's the area that's been selected. The problem with this is that, uh, well, problem or not, is that it goes to infinity, right? If we zoom out, you see our strokes have gone all the way into infinity. So that's good for broad strokes, but that's not what we want right now. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to do, oh, I'm going to redo that maybe. Can I redo? There we go. And then uh, if I just, yeah, exactly. If I just hit my shift key, my shift key, I can just uh, just erase the selection, right? So you can just paint, and then with shift, you can just erase that selection. So that's the one, right? That's that's one of the tools you have for cleaning. And then the other one is this. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's like a, it, it's like a cleaning in in depth. So I'm just gonna come here closer to our truck. And you see if I if I move, you see how you can see some floaters, which is pretty pretty straightforward, pretty standard with Gaussian splats. What what this um, tool here does is it shows you like a field of view of the camera, but with with a limit to its depth. So now anything that I paint here is only going to be within that space, right? So you see I'm painting here over the truck, but nothing's happening because of course it's limiting by the depth. So if I hold, I, I believe it's control and shift and, and use the mouse wheel, I can make that further in depth or closer to camera. So if I do further, 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 you see I can start selecting my truck. I'm gonna undo that. And then I'm gonna pull back a bit. You see I'm selecting now, it's not selecting any of the truck. But of course, if I get closer again, I can do that. So this is a, a pretty neat uh, option to have where you can just uh, select things that are maybe between you and your subject, but it's not easy to orbit around them and select them. So this way you can select things that are only in that slice of space between you and that limit that you set in the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go, go back to the regular selection here. I'm going to you know, reset my selection just so I can show you how I started with the with the cleaning with the with the cleanup of this right so I, I'm going to go ahead and, and make my selection here and I'm going to actually select uh, my truck and I'm going to move around and make sure that I select everything so it's a bit, a bit of the inverse I don't want to select what I want I want to select what I want to keep right so that seems like a pretty good starting point and then you have here an invert selection uh, tool so if you click that it's going to select everything but our truck here. So now I'm going to shift click here, make sure that nothing uh, that has to do with my truck is selected. So I'm going to change tools here so I can quickly see an orbit around. That seems pretty good to me. And that, of course, if I zoom out because her strokes go to infinity, is selecting everything. So now with that done, you can just say delete selected splats. You might be tempted to just hit the delete key, but what that's going to do is going to delete your splat selection, not the splat themselves. So I'm going to hit, hit here, delete selected splats. And now if I zoom out, what you'll see is that we've done a pretty good job of at least starting to clean this up. So now you can go again, broad strokes, and grab all that stuff that's on the outside that we don't really want, right? And hit again, delete selection here. And then you can see there's always stragglers, right? So the nice thing is that when you bring it into other softwares, uh, like for example, Unreal, I've tested, they also have um, have tools for you to, to crop your uh, splats. So this is like 
step one of cleaning you know make sure that you do grab everything it looks like we have a lot of floaters that we can't even see which is a bit annoying uh, but I guess that's just the nature of the beast right so I'm making sure I'm selecting as much as I can from the outside here and then let's see if I delete that did I kill my truck I did not so I'm pretty happy with that as a starting point you can go even even further here I'm gonna delete some of those and maybe some here on the side because at the end of the day when I do take this to Unreal I will be of course getting rid of the ground but for as a starting point that seems to be pretty good right there let's see so okay you see quickly you get your video 20 minutes later you get your splats and very quickly you can at least do a broad strokes cleanup and, and decide what you want to keep and what you're going to get rid of. Okay, so with our model clean, what we want to go ahead and do now is export it, of course. And that's, I guess, where I'm going to wrap it up for today. So in order to do the, ex the export is you want to go to file, you want to say export splat model. Then you, of course, get this pop up and definitely what you want to be exporting is that .ply. So that PLY, I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm just going to call it truck.ply. It's going to save. And if we go back to our video folder here, we have our Gaussian Splat exported. And that includes all the cleanup that we did. So now uh, you can grab this and import it to, uh, actually PostShot has an, uh, has a plugin for After Effects where you can just bring in the PLY file and then you can just you know record you can just record camera moves within uh, After Effects. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't have that kind of stuff in Nuke, but uh, thankfully we do have that bridge with Unreal. So in the next uh, in the next video where I'm going to be showing you the whole thing, I'll be showing you how to import that and then you know relight it and then take it back into Nuke hopefully and uh, see how successful we are. So hopefully you find that useful. And uh, next, I'm just going to leave you with the instructions on how to export your HDR videos to 8-bit using uh, iMovie, just if, if you're curious. But if you state this uh, for the whole thing, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. OK, so I have here the steps you need to follow in order to convert your HDR videos from iPhone to 8-bit directly in your iPhone through iMovie. It's actually quite straightforward. So as you can see, when you record your video, it's going to say HDR here at the top. And that's when you know you, you want to go ahead and convert it so that it doesn't uh, create Gaussian splats that are all blown out and with the incorrect roll up. So the next thing you want to go ahead and do is you want to open iMovie and you want to select the, the bottom option here. So you want to create your own movie from media on your phone. Then once you have that, it's just going to drop, you're just going to select your video and drop it into your timeline. And, and, and that's it, no effects, no nothing. Then you want to go ahead and, and, and select export from the bottom. And once you select the export, you want to say not project, but you want to say share video, right? So once you have, say share video, it's going to give you this pop up and then you're going to select where to save it. But what you want to go ahead and do is you want to open the options section here because that's where you can actually turn off HDR. Once you click the options menu there, you want to go ahead and select the HDR here and turn it off. That is the key part here. Once you have that done, you can just go back. It'll just take you back to the export section and you can just save your video or upload it to Google Drive or whatever it is you want to use. And then that's going to take a couple minutes, export your, it's going to be render, render your movie. And once that's done, it'll tell you your movie is already in your library. And then you'll see that the resulting video that you create no longer has that uh, HDR tag at the top. So hopefully that helps you. All right, cheers.